We've looked at the character demos. We've looked at all the wonderful different variations of person that you can play in Genshin, but I've never actually looked into the story or the lore or anything like that. So I did what any insane person would in that situation. And I opened up the Reddit. While it has great content, wasn't really that helpful. So I actually messaged a Genshin Impacts law creator and asked if it was cool to react to one of their videos and they said yes so fantastic let's see what's going on with the story so far this is the story so far up until the 4.0 update i realized there's more stuff that happened since then but i feel like there's a lot to catch up on this is a good way to do it and you can get my first reactions along with it i know most people will be like just play the game i understand that but we're doing it this way. The entire Genshin Impact story so far. This video will include everything that's happened in the main story, the state of each region before and after we've left them, as well as quests relevant to Genshin's upcoming Hydro region. Without further ado, here's everything you need to know about Genshin's story so far. Everything in the Genshin art style is just so pretty. It's just it's so nice to look at. I don't know what it is about it. It's something that goes just beyond a normal nice art style. It's it's so flowy and pleasant. Four .0 edition. I'm your leafy lord Shiri Minzaf, and I read the Genshin Impact lore so that you don't have to. Our story. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's exactly what I'm here for. With our traveler trying to leave this world with their sibling, but are blocked and separated by an entity known as the Sustainer of Heavenly Principles. The Sustainer of Heavenly Principles is a ridiculous name. If you have the Sustainer of Heavenly Principles coming after you, uh, you you messed up. There's something has gone terribly wrong in this situation. Famously known as the Unknown God. Traveler okay. Is a well, she's known now. Wait, wait, she's known as the Unknown God? Hmm. The little alien who descended to this world with their sibling in the form of a falling star. After an cool. undetermined set of years, Traveler wakes up in Mondstadt with a being known as Paimon offering to be their guide. Okay, Paimon does remind me of a Digimon name, but just chilling out for an unsuspected amount of years. Is, I'm getting Link vibes from Teaching that a little bit. Traveler the language of Teyvat and providing some valuable information on how this world works. This what people just... Get language like that? Man, I barely know English. I don't even know English right yet, good seven yet. Seven nations of Tevat are all ruled by the seven Archons. Go okay, so are these some of the Archons, I would imagine? I know that the, the Wee Kid is one of them. I remember that being referenced when I reacted to the character demos. The Wee Kid was one of them. I don't know if the other ones are. That's the Bard, isn't it? The green one is the Bard. And, then, and that's the Shogun, right? That's the, the Boob Sword Shogun. That's chosen by a divine hierarchy known as Celestia to rule over the lands and their respective elements. Visions okay, are seven elements. Uses conduits for elemental power. These visions are granted to a select few people in Tevat by the gods, not necessarily the Archons. Traveler and Paimon encounter a massive green dragon and- And Traveler, clearly not from this world. So does he get access to some? This I suppose we'll find out. the start of the Mondstadt Archon quests. Mondstadt, oh also known as a city of freedom, is a nation that worships the Animo Archon, who although is relatively absent from the city, has an entire church and religion dedicated to him. Relatively absent is better than most gods do. Most gods aren't relatively absent. They're just they're just straight up not there ever. So even if you pop in maybe like once a year, maybe pop in for Christmas, bring a turkey, still better than most gods. The Knights of Havonius are an order that protects Mondstadt with Jean as the acting Grandmaster. Grandmaster Varka is currently on an undisclosed expedition. Where's he Mondstadt gone? Mondstadt is currently being tormented by a dragon named Storm Terror, who has unleashed <laughs> violent windstorms in an attempt to destroy the city. Who named him Storm Terror? Did he call himself that? That's a little cringe if you call yourself the that. The source of Storm Terror's power is tied to ley line disruptions happening in four temples spread across Bunchstad. Ley lines are okay. a network of elemental energy and memories, and disruptions within them in the most extreme cases can cause complete geographical and meteorological changes. I didn't realize the ley lines was a thing that genuinely would exist. The only thing I know ley lines from is when that priest went off on Pokemon, and he said that you follow ley lines if you play Pokemon Go and that demons are summoned. It's the only time I've ever heard of ley lines. The objective is to destroy Storm Terror's crystals in the temples to essentially cut off his power supply. The reason for Storm Terror's attacks is due to hatred in his heart. According to Librarian... I guess that's a pretty straightforward. He just doesn't like Lisa, folk, okay. All that Traveler needs to know about the current state of things is found in this book, Breeze Amidst the Forest. In this book, we learn of Devalin's valiant deeds during a global catastrophe that happened 500 years ago, known as the Cataclysm. When the Eclipse dynasty of Conria had fallen, a vengeful alchemist named Gold, in her own greed and ambition, had unleashed an army of shadowy creatures that wreaked havoc all over Teyvat. Come on, Durin, do that. One of Gold's creations was a wicked dragon who sought to destroy Mondstadt. 
Oh, but he looks so good though. Look at this thing. The skeletal dragon look never gets old. It's always amazing. The animal Archon and Dvalin rose up against Durin, where Dvalin had ended Durin's life with a fatal bite to the throat, in which nice. Dvalin had inadvertently ingested Durin's poisonous blood. Oh, is that where he gets the After hate from? After the battle, Dvalin had fallen into a deep slumber. Centuries passed, and he finally woke up not long before Traveler's arrival. To his dismay, the people of the current time no longer remember Dvalin as one of the protectors of Monstad, and cowered Sad. in fear, giving him the nickname Storm Terror. Being very objective about this, if a dragon woke up after hundreds and hundreds of years, and there was random farmers just walking about, and they don't remember this chabby at all, and they see a massive dragon, I, I would be quite scared too. I would be a little bit afraid. Trail, pain, and hatred that was further exacerbated by the poisonous blood clots Durin endured from his previous battle turned him into a vengeful dragon. After Mate, you are so big! Go and pick on someone your own size. Solving the matter at the temples and restoring Monstad's elemental flow to stop the windstorm. That's the, that's the Grandmaster, right? Traveler and Paimon run into Venti, a bard who claims he is the animal Archon and can- Does he have like a singing sequence? I really hope he does. And use the famed holy lyre de Hermel to play music that would soothe and coax out Dvalin's gentle nature. This lyre gets stolen by a mage from the Fatui, a nefarious faction that hails from one of Teyvat's seven regions, Shneznaya, the Cryo Nation. The organization's motive so far is to gain control of the Archon's powers by collecting Gnosis, a device used by the Archons to tap into the divine powers of Celestia. Okay, so you use those devices to tap into like godly energy, godly power, and the, the, the what's it called? The lyre? The, the, the musical instrument that they stole, presumably since it's used by one of the Archons, like has some kind of godly potential and can do celestial magic. The party successfully retrieves the lyre from the- And Venti is like, oh no, my lyre. All right, I'll, I'll chill in the, ca the tavern. I suppose that you can probably add him to your team, right? Tui, with the help of Jean and Diluc but not before hearing the agents warn them that Signora will end them. The group heads to Star Snatch Cliff to summon and purify Dvalin, but in a- God, that dragon is so cool! I love this design! It's almost like a giant bird. You usually don't see dragons that have almost feathery-like appearances, which is really, really cool. It almost- it almost doesn't look like a dragon. It has the, the four wings, it has the talon-like claws that still have scales on, but almost are like bird-esque. So cool. This mage intercepts and Dvalin leaves. Poor Dvalin in his anguish was susceptible to the call of the Abyss Order, a mysterious and supposedly evil organization that seeks to destroy the Seven Nations. So I heard that supposedly. Hmm, supposedly evil, is it? Out of revenge for the fall of Conria, the kingdom that fell during the Cataclysm 500 years ago. The that bloody alchemist at it Dr. again. Dvalin seeks refuge in Storm Terror's lair. Traveler manages to purge Dvalin from his abyssal corruption, and Dvalin is finally freed from the Abyss Order's yeah! grasp. Well, that ends well in Monstad, or so it seems. And, and that is Genshin Impact. You cure a dragon of his sad depression. Still, a Fatui harbinger named La okay. Signora steals Venti's Gnosis. Venti, weekend after this encounter, Bro, this guy cannot stop getting mugged. He has a liar, boom, doesn't have a liar anymore. Has some gnosis, boom, doesn't have gnosis anymore. This guy's supposed to be the Archon? He's a l I'm gonna be honest, he's not really doing a very good job. There urges Traveler and Paimon to head to Li Yue. But maybe I'm being a little bit mean, because if I got mugged on the street multiple times, I wouldn't want someone to say that about me either. He's just a bit of an unlucky chap, isn't he? To speak to the Geo Archon. Once every year, he descends to the land during the Rite of Dissension, a ceremony that is said to be happening very soon. Mondstadt is also the place we encounter the Wishful Drops event, which has one of the earliest mentions of Fontaine. The story follows a crisis in the Dawn Winery where the water's in the air- Oh wait, they, they mentioned Fontaine later on- oh, Font Fontaine? Is that, was that my mispronouncing it? They mention it in, what is this, the 1.0 drop or something? This is, this is very early on, right? They have suddenly turned bitter. Mondstadt's main export is dandelion wine, so you can probably- Dandelion wine? That is an incredibly specific- This is an entire country, right? This main export is dandelion wine? I, that's a little shocking. I, <laughs> how incredibly specific. Imagine the urgency. The bitterness of the water is due to Rodea the Oceanid, an elemental being in tune with water. So and cool. Oceanid's emotions can affect the quality of bodies of water. 
Pain and hatred in Rodea's heart have turned the Mondstadt waters bitter because her heart longs for the previous Hydro Archon. Wait, that's the... Oh god, what's her name? That's the that's the actress lass, isn't it? From the newest update? And she harbors enmity towards Endora, a fellow Oceanid whom she believes is an assassin sent to kill her. <laughs> that thing? No, oh, it wouldn't hurt a fly. Just look at him. He's a weak, he's a cute little thing. A strange little life form who claims to have traveled here from the nation of war. Complete all exploration. He couldn't hurt a fly. Look at him. He's got one eye. He's a little globby guy. In the current state of Mondstadt, the situation with Devalin has been resolved. The windstorms have disappeared and Devalin is no longer a vengeful dragon. Mondstadt Good, is great. more or less the same as it was prior to Devalin's rampage. The animal archon is still relatively absent, allowing people of Mondstadt to live in freedom. And things appear to be peaceful so far. And the dandelion wine trade is going crazy. The Fatui have one out of seven gnosis. That's not great. Well, at least I assume that's not great. Next up, the Yue. The Yue is the Geo Nation ruled by Morax, the god of contracts, colloquially known as Rex Lapis. It is considered the most prosperous nation in all of Tevat, and it is. Tevat is the world that they inhabit. It's or it's the at least the landmass to which all of the Genshin impacts. Impact. Also, where Mora, the global currency of Tevat, is, right? is minted by the Geonosis. The Yue is protected and governed by the Adepti, illuminated beasts and gods elected by Rex Lapis, and the Chi Sing, a committee made of seven business leaders who implement the policies laid out by Rex Lapis. So, the, wait, it's all the currency is minted by the Geonosis, and assumingly, this group is going to try and steal it, which means no more minting, no more money. Everyone bankrupt, no money anymore. Only they have money, you no money anymore. The Adepti and Chi Sing disagree with the way Li Yue's affairs are being handled, with the Adepti believing humans to be too weak to fend for themselves, and the Chi Sing Facts believing based. they are self-sufficient without the Adepti. Look at those weak little piss babies on the floor. How dare they try and have a nation and societies. Every year, one of the Chi Sing is selected to perform the Rite of Dissension, a ceremony in which the Geo Archon himself descends in dragon form to give his predictions on the business trends that will shape the Yue's economy for that year. <laughs> they have the equivalent of a god that comes down and tells them what stocks to trade? <laughs> That's so cool. This year, the Rite of Dissension is being performed. There's a guy that comes down and he's like, Good evening, citizens. My subjects, invest in Microsoft. I promise it'll be super good. Do options trading, it's awesome. Formed by Ningguang, the owner of the luxurious Jade Chamber. However, Rex Lapis descends dead, <gasps> and travelers due to their proximity to the ceremony on top of being a foreigner is ordered to be apprehended. <laughs> they just turn around and like, <laughs> that guy's a fucking foreigner, must have been him. They are rescued by a Hydrovision user named Tartalia, one of the infamous Ooh. Fatui Harbingers. I split. Wait, a Fatui Harp? Wait, the Fatui was the one that stole the, I'm gonna mispronounce that, Geonosis, right? So, hmm, good, you know, bad, villains, good. Hmm. Talia informs the Traveler that in order to clear their name of any accusations, they must win the favor of the Adepti, all of which attest the Traveler's innocence in Rex Lapis's death. At this time, the Li Yue Qi Sing are refusing to let anyone near oh Rex Lapis's body. Oh my god, hi. Zhong Li is a consultant of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Oh, that's- I remember this guy! This is the guy that keeps spending money on, like, chopsticks and all that, and he's bankrupt, or he keeps, like, stealing money from the funeral parlor. His job it is to give Rex Lapis a proper burial. Travelers tasked with assisting Zhong Li in procuring special items for this funeral ceremony known as the Rite of Parting. Ningguang later invites Traveler to the Jade Chamber to inform them of several concerns. She just holds, she just holds it like that. It's just it, the way she holds things. It's just like, oh my, let me hold on. Sorry, let, let me, let me move my dumb face out the way. Just, just the way she holds things is just, it's so elegant and nice. With the death of Rex Lapis, a restructuring of the U.S. government is necessary and that restructuring might involve the Adepti no longer having jurisdiction over the Yue. The Fatui might be to blame for these rumors of reorganization happening. I like him, and it's one main reason why I like him. He's ginger and he has blue eyes. Much like myself, I trust someone. There's no way someone with that ginger and blue eyes could possibly be a bad person. Therefore, they are good. Ning causing fear and panic in the Liyue citizens, and Ning Guang is extremely aware of the Fatui's desire to recover Rex Lapis's body. Amidst all the uncertainty and chaos in Liyue Harbor, I mean, I just look at the way he wields his lightsabers, too. realizes that Tartalia might be looking for the Geonosis. 
The Geonosis is surprisingly missing from Rex Lapis' body and a battle ensues. Bartalia believes that the body was a diversion and that the Geo Archon is still alive. In an attempt to oh. force the Geo Archon to show himself and surrender the Geonosis, Tartalia summons Osail, an ancient god that had tormented the Yue in the past. At this point, the Li Yue Qi Sing and the Adepti put their differences aside to face his common enemy, and ultimately, Ningguang is forced to drop the Jade Chamber on Osail. Oh my god, whoa! Whoa! Literally, Genshin nukes going off. Hey, I, I'm gonna be honest. Releasing gods a little bit dangerous. Traveler seeks out Zhongli and is surprised to find him with Lesson Yo. How do they have so much drip? Like, where did they even get this from? How is everyone so attractive? Tara and Tertalia. Zhongli reveals himself to be the Geo Archon Rex Lapis and the one behind the series of events, including faking his death. All of this was wait, done to test Li Yue in hopes the nation could. Wait, with the funeral parlor guy was the. The, the Archon the whole time? Drive without an Archon's rule. He allegedly forged a contract to end all contracts with a crowd Archon, the leader of the Fatui, and willingly surrenders his Gnosis to the Harbingers. Zhongli insists that Traveler and Paimon should head over to Inazuma, as news of his death will Whoa, cause the Electro Jesus. Archon to move forward with her plans. But- I thought he was just really, really bad with money. But he must be really good with money because he's the chabby that's supposed to come down and say, do, uh, do, do options on GameStop. I, I promise it's, it's going to be really good. But he's not bad with money. He's very good with money in theory. He was pretending to be bad with money because he should know how to handle it properly. But before that, we take a quick trip back to Munchstadt to investigate a stranger named Dainsliff at the He forgets that you can't just print money anymore. <laughs> Oh, he was printing it. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a little bit easy to be uh, financially stable when you literally own the means of printing money. Class of Catherine and the Adventurers Guild. Thanesliff apparently only accepts Adventurers Guild commissions that are related to the Nefarious Abyss Order, the faction responsible for Devalin's momentary rampage. The a potentially good or maybe not potentially bad. Free to follow the trail of a supposed Abyss Herald. They are unsuccessful, but it is in this quest that we learn two important things about Thanesliff. First off, great drip once again. Looks like a vampire, to be honest. Fanta gorgeous eyes. Male or female? I can't tell, but that's fine. Cool mask. Just, I don't know where you get the shoulder guard. Shoulder guard's a little bit much. He had a traveling companion, and he's been alive for at least 500 years. It's way too long. Part ways in Mondstadt, and Traveler and Paimon head back to Liyue Harbor to investigate Abyss Order activity in the ruins oh, nearby. It's on go! Surprise! Oh, no. They find a human sacrifice and a defiled statue, a statue of the animal Archon turned upside down and emanating dark energy. Okay, well, this can only go well, I'm sure. Human sacrifices? Psh, and only good things happen when you sacrifice people. They really escape an Abyss Herald and encounter Dean's lift just outside the ruins. It's him. You're, it's you. It's you. It's, it's you. You look very similar. Dainsliff joins in on their commission, and the trio uncover an Abyss Order plot to revive Osile and turn him into a mecha god. Using what? We just nuked him. There can't be that much left. What are they gonna? A mecha god? Is there? Do they have enough metal? Can they make massive robots like that? A filed statue in something called the Eye of the First Field Tiller. This Eye of the First Field Tiller turns out to be a part from the first Ruin Guard ever created. A prototype that was far stronger than the Ruin Guards created after. Dainsliff decides to keep the Eye of the First Field Tiller, not trusting anyone but himself and keeping it safe. The trio return to the ruins in the Yue to destroy the defiled statue and halt the Abyss Order in their tracks. He was doing a force choke right there, that was pretty sick. accepted by an Abyss Herald and by none other than the Traveler's sibling, who revealed- What? No! The last we've been trying to find this entire time is now a, a herald of the abyss. We just knock her out and then and then de re-educate her. Reveals themselves to be the prince or princess of the abyss order. The sibling reveals that Dainsliff was a twilight sword, a royal guard of Conria who failed to protect the nation from disaster 500 years ago. As a result, he was cursed with immortality and has been alive since the cataclysm. They also reveal themselves to have been Dainsliff's traveling companion many years ago. Tra oh, they they knew each other. They're besties. Many years, wait, many years ago, the sister revealed herself? Okay, so the traveler was like knocked out having to sleep for 
Yes. So this technically could have happened. She wakes up earlier, gets maybe brainwashed, maybe not brainwashed, maybe just thinks they're they're proper mint by by the abyss folk. Goes traveling with Dainsliff. I didn't. He's sleeping for five hundred years. I, I don't realize. I thought I thought they meant like two. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she's been she's been working hard. She's been putting the grind in. Traveler's sibling also insists that they have a war with destiny and that our traveler will see the truth of this world once they finish their journey, a series okay. of travels that our sibling has already completed. Oh, right. So she's saying, okay, you need to do the everything that I did, then you'll understand. Which, sure. I mean, that works. Yeah, the that, that, that works. Summons a portal that the sibling leaves through with Dean's in pursuit. So in theory, she's like, as soon as my brother does all these travels, he's going to be an abyss folk like me. Tries to cheer up Traveler and insists they go to Inazuma for answers. The defiled What's Paimon's goal in all this? What is Paimon even... Is Paimon just hanging around? Is, is Paimon just bored? Statue remains undestroyed. Here is a state of the Yue after the Archon quests. Mora was solely being minted by the Geonosis. Now that Zhongli had surrendered the Gnosis to the Saritza, no new Mora is currently being minted due to him not having an alternative plan for his resignation as an Archon. Oh my god, he resigned and didn't have a plan? What is he, David Cameron? A major issue from a financial standpoint according to Zhongli. The Qixing now operates solely as the decision makers behind the US policies and regulations with the Adepti stepping back to allow humans a chance to prove and fend for themselves. Ningguang later rebuilds the Jade Chamber during the interlude chapter The Crane Returns on the Wind. The defiled statue from the We Will Be Reunited Archon Quest remains intact as Traveler and Paimon still haven't destroyed it. Ainsliff is still in possession of the Eye of the First Field Tiller, a powerful mechanism developed by Conria. You know, Zhongli is a bit of a useless fucking Archon, isn't he? <laughs> he just quit and was like, all right, uh, no money anymore. Fatui have two out of seven Gnosis. No. Sorry, maybe I'm being, once again, maybe I'm being too harsh on these Archons. I imagine being a person of godly power and potential is quite pressurizing. And one thing goes wrong, you ruin the lives of many, many, many folks. So maybe I'm being too harsh. I'm sorry. On to the next stop of our journey, Inazuma. Inatsuma is ruled by A, the Electro Archon, with the Raiden Shogun, a stone puppet yes. being used as her mortal vessel. Oh, okay. So, all right. The Shogun is not the Archon, just a, a, a the puppet for the, for the actual Archon. Isolationism due to the Sakoku Decree, with violent thunderstorms around the region making sea travel nearly impossible. So, this is Japan. I only assume it's Japan because of the Shogun also, thing. Also, the Vision Hunt Decree, in effect, to confiscate all visions. Those who disobey and withhold their visions would be punished severely. Due to diplomatic immunity, the Fatui are able to freely enter the country. Inazuma mm, is also led by the Tri Commission, three organizations who oversee various matters. The Kanjo and Tenryu Commissions are responsible for enforcing the Sakoku Decree and Vision Hunt Decree. Inazuma is also in the middle of a civil war waged against the Shogun by the Sangonomiya clan. The resistance group and the shogun's forces are at a standstill at yes they're in a civil war with the shogun oh this is what that reminds me of if they're having a civil war in japan it's like when the shogun and the the imperial side the the emperor went to to war in it's not a very long time period but uh the <laughs> shogun got a little bit clapped in that one big war lots of things happened also in shogun total war 2 which i absolutely love Shiori island Traveler and Paimon get to Inazuma safely with the expertise of Beido and Kazua and are greeted by Toma, a trusted business partner who agrees to aid them in meeting the Raiden Shogun. Toma introduces the pair to his employer, the Kamisato clan's princess, Kamisato Ayaka. Oh, it's a princess forehead! Who, after hearing Traveler's deeds in Monstad and Diyue, is hoping they'd aid her in abolishing the Vision Hunt decree. Okay, Vision. I need to find out what that is. Vision is a gift from the gods bestowed upon those with great ambition or passion living, living in this area. It gives them the ability to use elements. Oh, so it's the thing that allows you to use these these elements, like the, the fire and, and the water elements, and they want no one to have them? Those who have lost their visions due to the decree experience severe bouts of memory loss, loss, mood swings, and depression. Almost oh yeah, well that's messed up. Why are you just taking parts of their souls? That's messed up. Almost losing a part of themselves in the process. With Ayaka's charm, Traveler- It's like a lobotomy in the physical sense. But you have memory loss, you lose a part of yourself, you lose a part of your personality, what made you you. It's pretty- it's really messed up, actually. He finally agrees to help abolish the decree, and soon after, Toma is apprehended by the Tenryu Commission. The Raiden Shogun herself makes an appearance to remove Toma's vision from him, and the ceremony oh. is interrupted by the Traveler. 
Let's go. Overwhelmed by her power, Traveler, Toma, and Paimon flee the scene. What? So you lose no matter what, even if you're actually like goaded? Or is this just straight up a cutscene? Like, pff, get, give me control of the Traveler. I, I've destroyed Shogun. I'd be super good at this game. Toma insists that Traveler gets in contact with the Resistance group at Watatsumi for safety. In Watatsumi Island, Traveler and Paimon pledge their allegiance with the Resistance oh. group. And oh yeah, this is the this is the water lass. I love her hair. Very, very nice. And um, this is the dog that gets feminized, right? Shortly after, the Shogun's forces arrive. Pujo Sada, leader of the Tenryu Commission Force. And that is the last that is proper. I, I don't like using this word, but a, a, a simp for the Shogun, right? That's kind of a dumb. I hate using that word, but th that's essentially what's happening here. I mean, I get it. To be honest, I, I do understand. I completely understand. I'd like to apologize. I rate her lowly because I didn't think her character was that interesting. But now that I saw the Shogun, I totally understand. I get it. Still, maybe be a little bit anti authority. This is offers a momentary ceasefire in exchange for Traveler something that Resistance General Goro refuses, and a battle ensues. Resistance leader Sangonomiya Kokomi arrives, and the battle is won for now as the Shogun's forces retreat. There's a problem, however. The Resistance group has been desperate for supplies and have accepted help from the Fatui unbeknownst to them. The Fatui had been supplying delusions to the Resistance army, a dangerous delusions? mechanism developed by the Fatui to imitate visions. Oh, it's like fake visions. Okay, so it's like the smile fruits from One Piece. Although I guess not exactly the same, but it is a, an attempt to imitate the regular powers. The use of a delusion severely depletes the life force of its wearer, the consequence of which kills resistant soldier Tepe. Traveler- Yeah, that's unfortunate. So rest in peace, Tepe. ...wants revenge, and they head to the delusion- it's like a B-Tech, yeah, it's B-Tech Visions. ...factory to destroy it, but are quickly subdued by- And you go to a factory to destroy it? Yeah, this is this is very much like Smile Fruits. ...to a harbinger, Scaramouche. Before Traveler passes out, they are rescued by Yai Miko, the head of the Narukami Shrine, owner of the Yai Publishing House, and the Raiden Shogun's familiar. Oh yeah, she's the... She has the, an interesting attitude, I'll say. A very interesting attitude, but she's also a little bit of a right. She does it all, really. I mean, just look at, look at her hair. She's got time to do her hair. She's got time to write books. Have, an, have a bit of a chewed, go and save the traveler as well. Yeah, Miko coerces Kujo Sara to side with the resistance by enlightening her to the Fatui's involvement in the Vision Hunt decree. It was the Fatui's attempt to destabilize Inazuma and create a market for their delusions. They had bribed both the Tenryu and Kanjo Commission, and it is the reason why the Fatui are free to enter and leave Inazuma. Kujo Sara finally agrees to aid the resistance given the surmounting evidence of Fatui trickery at play. Oh, okay. I was like, how are you going to get her on side when she's Shogun's number one fan? But I suppose if you can show that things are getting manipulated behind the scenes and you need to team up in order to take down the real bad guy, then that makes sense. ...encounters both La Signora and the Raiden Shogun at Tenchukaku. La Signora feigns innocence and a duel is arranged in which oh my La Signora goodness. loses and is slain by the Muso no Hitotachi. A what? reveals that she allowed the Vision Hunt decree to persist as it posed no threat to her ideals of eternity. A place she what? believes is where everything is kept the same. Traveler challenges her to a duel to a- That's dumb! I allow the vision hunt decree to persist because it doesn't have an effect on this place where nothing changes? I mean, come on, you're still like spiritually lobotomizing Abolish folks. the vision hunt decree, and with the aid of Yaimiko via a protection charm, A loses the duel and the vision hunt decree has come to an end. Hey! Hey! The Fatui failed to get their hands on another Gnosis, having already acquired two out of seven at this point. But Yae Miko reveals that in exchange for Traveler's life and safety back at the Delusion Factory, she'd given Fatui Harbinger Scatamouche the Electronosis, something she'd been keeping safe for A as the Electro Archon had cut off all ties with Celestia. Yae Miko advises that Traveler and Paimon travel to Sumeru, and this is where the Inazuma Archon quests end. This is the state of Inazuma I like that one. after- that was interesting. A little bit of civil war, a little bit of drama, a little bit of bad leadership, a little bit of hunting down specific groups of people, which is not good. Our conquests. The vision hunt decree is abolished and visions are returned to their rightful owners. Oh, you get them back. Okay, you can't do that with a little botomy. That is, there's, you can't just plug your brain back in. The Sakoku decree is lifted much later during Act 2 of the Raiden Shogun story quest, causing an influx of visitors and trade to the country. Both the Kanjo and Tenryu commissioners are arrested for their involvement with the Fatui. Fatui forces retreat from Inazuma while some stay behind to supposedly avenge La Signora. They didn't take their brains? No, I'm exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like with a, a real lobotomy, you get 
parts taken out of your, your head. But with the visions, while it has a similar effect of taking your memories, taking your abilities, taking what parts of, parts of making you you, you can get it back. You can't just put your brain back in your brain. Uh. A later finds a new resolve as a shogun and she begins to play a more active role in Inazuma's policies. Inazuma seems to be moving towards a more progressive future post-R conquests. The Fatui have three out of seven Gnosis. They just keep getting these Gnosis. Is there ever going to be a situation where they don't get one? Because I feel like there's not going to be a situation where they don't get Before one. Before heading to- I actually, I, I like that. I mean, I like that quick little breakdown of what happens. But people saying that it wasn't very well executed uh, when you play the game, which I can imagine is probably true. Or I don't know, but I, in theory, I like Sumeru, it. Sumeru, the next Archon quest takes place in the chasm. Traveler and Paimon investigate a strange occurrence in which Hillichills are mindlessly wandering into the chasm, only to disappear without a trace. The pair run into Dane's Gathering an army. after the events of the We Will Be Reunited Archon quest was transported to Storm Terror's lair immediately after trying to follow Traveler's sibling and the Herald. There are a couple important takeaways from this Archon quest. When the Cataclysm happened in Conria, soldiers and civilians alike were transformed into monsters seemingly due to the cruelty of Celestia. Oh, that's not very good. Wait, that's that's the over gods. The archons get their power from Celestia. That's a bit fucked up. I mean, don't, don't this be doing that. This inflicts pain, and Hillichills have come to the chasm to die, as the environment in the chasm oh seems god. to weaken the curse just for a bit for their final moments. Oh my These god! These Hillichills used to be humans, and Danes have believed that once people what? turn into monsters, they lose all semblance of their humanity. But they don't, do they? Are these the mobs that you've been killing the entire game as well? I have seen gameplay where people are just running around and going and you know, just attacking these things left and right. So really you're just attacking innocent civilians that have had their form completely ruined and their minds scrambled, turned into horrific monster creatures that are depressed and sad that did nothing wrong and now want to just die. So they crawl into a mountain, hoping that it'll just kill them. Oh, this is so sad. Something that was immediately disproven by Halfden. A guard turned monster who had remembered and obeyed Dainsliff's command from 500 years ago to protect the people of Conria. Oh, man. Before heading to Sumeru, we are introduced to events that tell us a little bit of Fontaine and its current problems. Fontaine has a waterline crisis which may imply that the nation is sinking. It also has an energy problem in which the city's current energy source is dwindling with engineers. Hey, listen, sinking is completely okay. There's really great cities that are under the ocean. There's Atlantis, there's Rapture, nothing has gone wrong in those. Fantastic. The underwater city, you're going to get crazy tourist revenue. People are going to love coming to your underwater city. Just install some windows and you'll be all right. Engineers all over the country working to resolve this energy crisis. Chapter 3 of Teyvat's story takes place in Sumeru, led by Dendro Archon Lesson Kusanali, the god of wisdom. Oh no, here, okay. I remember this lass's little, this wee lass's trailer, and I remember how sad it was that she basically lives on Groundhog Day, experiencing the same sadness forever and ever and ever. Sumeru Academia, Teyvat's largest known academic center, is located in the main city. The Macha are disciplinary officers for Sumeru Academia and enforce the academia's oh. integrity. The Yu -Gi -Oh. Knights are a loosely organized mercenary corps in the deserts of Sumeru that accept commissions from various organizations. I love her. I love her so much. She is so great. She's wonderful. Haven't played the game. If she sucks in the game, don't care. I love her. Depending on the pay. She's the one that like saves orphans, right? Fantastic. The best. The Academia is currently Sumeru's main governing body. Knowledge is managed as a resource through a device known as the Akasha system, which was invented by the previous Dendro Archon, Greater Lord Ruka Devata, and is currently being powered by the Dendro Gnosis. I feel bad for all the Genshin law folk out there that have to try and pronounce all these names. It's They don't make it easy on you. Ruka, 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 Ruka Devata. The people of Sumeru are connected to all the information in the Akasha system via devices known as the Akasha terminals. Oh, they have internet. Do they have do they have YouTube? Can they subscribe to Patters? <laughs> on oh, no. The consequence of using the devices have caused the people of Sumeru to stop dreaming. The what? What? Using the internet makes you stop dreaming because you spend all your time on TikTok on your phones and we don't have any dreams anymore. We don't dream to be higher than ourselves because we're just too busy watching TikTok on our phones all the time. So we don't have higher aspirations anymore. The Akasha system is regulated by the Academia, which bans information that comes from outside sources. The sages of the Academia have become more radical in their belief that the arts are meaningless. 
The Academia Sages have also rejected the current Dendro Archon Kusanali in favor of the former. As a result, Kusanali lives in seclusion and has very little control over the affairs of Sumeru. Those That's with tough. faith in Kusanali are very- That is a really, really um, interesting way to gloss over being trapped in the same day over and over again and depressing hardship and not being able to do anything ever. And this development has furthered the corruption of the Academia with the Sages having all the jurisdiction and nothing to stop them so far. There's strife so sad. the desert folk and forest folk of Sumeru as they believe their respective deceased gods to have been the true rulers of Sumeru, King Deshret versus Greater Lord Dugidavata. Sumeru is affected by the withering, corruption that happened after a ruler named King Deshret introduced forbidden knowledge to his people. Forbidden knowledge is a type of wisdom that comes from outside of Teyvat. Oh, alien knowledge, eh? What kind of forbidden knowledge was it? What did they What did they learn? Did they learn things they weren't supposed to? Did they learn about aliens? Did they learn other conspiracy theories real? Did they learn why clouds are formed? Did they learn why magnets work? The withering causes areas of the land to rapidly deteriorate and decay. And the effect on humans is a disease known as Elazar, whose symptoms include the hardening of one's skin until fatigue, Nerve damage and necrosis occurs, causing oh. permanent immobility. Upon oh god, wait, so you turn to stone, or at least an equivalent of turn into stone? The, the, the whole place is like Medusa. During Sumeru, Traveler experiences a hallucination via an incense known as Spirit Borneal. This hallucination causes them to see a white tree, later known as the Irmansal. He is tripping out so much right now. Yeah, yeah, this, While this incense out, they is good. Were rescued by forest rangers Kale and Tognani, who helped them get to Sumeru City to try to see the Dendro Archon. Traveler and Paimon are given Akasha terminals and are helped by Dunyar Zaka. No, wait, don't do it. You won't dream anymore. You'll never aspire. You'll never become more than you are. Don't go on the internet. Don't go on TikTok, Traveler. And her guardian, Dihya. I love her so much. Nirzad is a rare follower of Kusanali and has volunteered to organize this year's Subsidus Festival a celebration dedicated to Kusanali's birthday. Dunyarazad and dancer Nilu are excited for the preparation of the sub- She's great too, the dancer. She's lovely. Subsidus festival. The festival is however shut down by the grand stage of the academia, Azar. The day ends with an ominous beep with an unknown voice stating that the- Oh no, he's a Reddit debate, bro. Look at this. Oh, I can't- oh, I can't make the freaking thing go away? He says, With your lack of intellectual credentials, I don't believe that you're qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers and tearing down your ridiculous eyesore. Mm. Project has Man. Just he's literally the nerd emoji. Fuck this guy. I hate him. Begun. The mass stream harvest scheme. With the help- <laughs> What was this made by Hypno? Drowsy's in on this, like, oh yes, the mass dream harvest scheme. It even has a nice little rhyme to go along with it. It really bounces off the tongue right nicely, doesn't it? Named Nahida, who later reveals herself to be the Dendro Archon Kusanali, Traveler and Paimon realize they are well, trapped she is. in a samsara, a constant loop of the day of the Subsedus Festival, which we later learn is actually Nilu's dream. The Akasha Terminal was being used by the Academia to farm the dreams of the people of Sumeru. The process works by separating one's consciousness and placing it into a host dream. The now vacant dream gets harvested at the end of every cycle. But why dreams? Kusanelli notes that dreams are rich- So you'd still go to sleep like normal, but you just wouldn't have a dream. Or you would in theory, but you'd be removed from it and then they could, you'd be could harvested. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing with dreams? What are you doing with dreams? Bundles of human wisdom since the mind is most active when dreaming. However, this constant state of dreaming causes fatigue. Dunyarzad becomes Dunyarzad, but Kusanali is able to preserve a fragment of her consciousness to keep her alive in the real world. That's interesting. I mean, to be fair, they're not wrong. The mind is most active when they were dreaming. I had a dream last night that I was a, an attack on Titan land, and I was doing an attack on Titan. I was like, shh, shh. and then there was there, there was the speech, the the my soldiers rage speech. He, the guy the guy was doing that in the background while I was like killing titans it was it was crazy very creative stuff traveler wakes up nilu the samsara finally ends and we later learn that the fatui may have had a hand in oh, whoa, whoa, what the, the mass fuck? dream harvest scheme was an experiment what? helmed by fatui harbinger il de tore in order I, was, I was too i was too invested man. i got jump scared what the hell to provide the academia with a new god superior to nahida with the vessel for it being fellow harbinger scaramouche who was in possession of the electronosis from inazuma Nahira and Traveler defeat the newly born god Scaramouche, and Nahira removes the Electronosis power in his new form. Scaramouche is taken into Nahira's custody and recovers in a secret location in the meantime. That is so cool. I mean, I asked if they could actually put the Serpent God into a mecha, and I suppose they can. They're doing literal Gurren Lagann over here. Using both the Dendro and Electronosis, Nahira and the Traveler access the previous Dendro Archon's final memory for her wisdom. 
They are taken back to the vision that Traveler had first seen upon entering Sumeru, the Erminsel Tree, which we learn is a database of all the information and memories in Teyvat. The pre oh, she's so cute! Oh my god! Oh, she's so cute! This is so precious! I just want her to be okay. This Sendra Archon Rukitivata had created Nahida. Oh no! I have no context of this apart from this video, and I'm I'm feeling a little bit right now. As a oh branch my from this tree to serve as her next reincarnation. During the Cataclysm, Rukitivata was tasked with protecting the Irminsul from abyssal corruption and Conria's use of forbidden knowledge. Is that her? Adult version? The very thing that destroyed King Deshwit's civilization. This corruption or the withering had affected Rukitivata and by extension the Irminsul, and the only way to clear the corruption is for Nahira to remove all traces of Rukitivata's existence. Once all traces of Rukitivata disappears from this world, the Irminsul is restored, and the withering completely goes away, meaning all people suffering from Elazar are finally cured. Hey. Only Traveler remembers Drukadevata as they are not part of this world, and changes to the Irminsul only affect people that are of Teyvat. Yay, we, we did it! The Irminsul, however, contains records of the Traveler's sibling, but anything after the end of their journey is fuzzy due to someone intentionally withholding information about the sibling's fate. Ildatora negotiates with Nahira for the Dendro and Electronosis, the exchange of which involves Ildatora destroying segments or copies of himself in information. She basically deletes herself in the world. Oh no. Regarding the truth of this world with the stars and skies being a lie. With the Fatui now in possession of 4 out of 7 Gnosis, Nahira urges Traveler to head to Fontaine. We need to make a better plan to deal with this Fatui because they are just getting every single one of them. Clearly what we've been doing so far is not working. They're getting every single one. In fact, every time the Traveler goes to a new region, they somehow get one. Is the Traveler secretly working with them to get all the Gnosis? Maybe. Maybe, they, maybe unbeknownst to them, unknowingly, they are the catalyst that enables them to grab it. Hmm. Is it bad? Well, actually, I don't know if it's, it's bad, technically. I guess we'll see. We'll, we'll see if it's bad. Here's the state of Sumeru after the Archon. And maybe, maybe there's, maybe it's good that they would get it, actually. Quests. The former Grand Sage of the Academia and his accomplices are exiled to Avidia Forest. Yeah, hey, get fucked, you stupid dickhead. Alhaitham was appointed as the acting Grand Sage of the Academia momentarily. He later resigns, leaving the Academia with no leader at the moment. Nahida is worshipped and believed to be the only Dendro Archon as no one has memories of Greater Lord Dukadevata. She now oversees all matters and affairs in the Dendro Nation. The Akasha system was shut down as a result of it no longer being powered by the Dendro Gnosis, and as a result, the people of Sumeru can experience dreams again. Let's go! They can, do, they can, they can be Attack on Titan like me! The Withering no longer persists in Sumeru, meaning Withering Zones and Elazar should- No know. more internet! No more- no more Reddit! No more TikTok! ...longer exist. Sumer is in a much better state than when we originally entered it. Scared. Maybe we should do the same thing. No, we shouldn't do the same thing. Oh god, I'd have no job. No, we should not do the same thing. That'd be really bad idea, actually. Mush comes back into existence as the Wanderer after removing his prior existence from the Irminsul. The Fatui Harbingers have an empty sixth spot that's been- I remember the Wanderer. That's the character demo that I wasn't a huge fan of, and people were like, oh, you don't like the Wanderer, but he's like really edgy and stuff. And I'm like, ah, oh, well, not personally not for me. But I only did watch the character demo. I, I didn't get the whole context, obviously. I was just rating based on the character demo. I was the one that years, I didn't like that much. Scaramouche technically never existed. The Fatui have collected four out of seven Gnosis. There's a brief Archon quest that takes place just prior to Fontaine. The Carabar Archon quest is our sibling's memory and is a prologue to their origin story as the Abyss Order's prince or princess. Covering of Good and Evil so far is my favorite world quest in all of Genshin, and in it we learn some incredible information pertinent to Fontaine and its former Hydra Archon. Traveler and Paimon meet Sorush, a floating being whose purpose is to oh. erase the sign of a Pausha, a celestial That looks like a Pokemon. sign from the cataclysm that reflects the abyss and corrupts the land around it. Only Sorush and the Great Songs can purify the sign of a Pausha. A sage named Nasajuna leads us to the Great Songs, some of which are located inside Conria ruins. Nasjuna later betrays Traveler and Paimon and reveals himself to be an agent of the Abyss. And after <laughs> Why did you leave them in there in the first place? That reminds me of like every single time in Breath of the Wild when you- or not Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, where you'd go underground and meet up with a researcher, except every single researcher in the- in the depths would always be one of those ninjas. Every single time. 
I'm like, haha, you didn't expect it to be me, the enemy that always attacks you. After obtaining all the great songs, we learn that the god of Sorish's species is a divine tree that acts as a seal absorbing abyssal defilement. This tree was actually the previous Hydro Archon, the Lord of Amrita. The lock folk were her dutiful spies sent across really the pretty. waters of Tevat to connect the people of the world together. The Lord of Amrita was one of the Archons called to Tunigi Hollow to combat the abyss, but was slain. Her body was turned into pure dew from which the previous Dendro Archon, Greater Lord Rukidavata, grew a massive tree called the Harvest Takum to keep Lord Amrita's conscience alive in the mortal realm. The Harvest Takum has kept abyssal forces trapped for years. After nice. Lord Amrita's death, Fosolar came to power as the new Hydro Archon, a development that was vehemently rejected by the Lock Folk. We learn in the 3.8 Secret Summer Paradise event that the Oceanids have also fled due to Fontaine's waters being toxic, following the rise of Fo So there's something really wrong with Fontaine's water. As it's, this place is going to get drowned, and I'm saying just embrace it. Just embrace it, go full rapture, maybe develop some genetically coded altering drugs to go along with it. You know, go the full nine miles. The new Hydro Archon. The Fontaine Archon quest we'll be experiencing upon 4.0's release are Chapter 4, Act 1, and Act 2. We are told oh, so it leads up to Fontaine. Fontaine will possibly be flooded, and on top of that, Linny and Lynette are investigating the truth behind the Oratress, a machine which generates power for the entire city. This machine works by collecting people's belief in justice via the trials at the court of Fontaine. It is also said to be conscious, alive. To find out more about what we know about Fontaine so far, feel free to check out my full-length video and analysis in my previous upload. Well, you do have an updated version that is Fontaine 4.2 Fontaine Archon Quest Recap and Theories. Potentially. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So we, the state of Fontaine is currently, before anything else happens, is the Hydro Archon is seemingly juvenile and finds entertainment of court drama in the courtroom. Oh, that's uh, for, for Farina? It's not the best place to live for people who have failed to abide by the country's harsh laws. Oh yeah, because there's the whole big prison. There is the, the 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 guy that is the warden of the prison that is actually great with kids, apparently. Very good with kids and also beats the fuck out of people all the time. Uh, and there is, even though it looks rich, there's a big, big water crisis. Big water crisis, big water issues. Lots of things going on. Well, that is, uh, dude. Uh, you know what? This is this is a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot to be learned, and there's a lot to be there's a lot to be gleaned from this. Uh, thank you so much, Min, for allowing me to react to this video. I would highly recommend that you go and subscribe to her if you're a Genshin Impact fan, because she has a ton of law related stuff that's going on here. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, thank you so much. And who knows? Who, who knows how? Who knows how far things will get? Hmm.